Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on this video saying I subscribed. Let's get into it. According to latest reports, the Indian Air Force and the Aeronautical Development Agency are discussing the possibility of a common engine with 110 kN thrust for both medium weight fighter and AMCA, to reduce the cost of development, and also lower the cost of each unit due to the higher scale of production. Initial pre-production medium weight fighter and advanced medium combat aircraft will be powered by General Electric's F-414 engine with 98 kN thrust, but the production variant for AMCA will require an engine of 110 kN thrust with an afterburner, which India plans to co-develop with a foreign partner. Rolls-Royce has offered its Eurojet engine which currently powers the Eurofighter Typhoon, and Safran has offered its M88 engine which powers the Rafale fighter jet, while Russia is also keen to offer a customized AL-41 engine variant to meet the thrust class requirement of AMCA. AMCA will require two engines with thrust vectoring control, but the medium weight fighter will need a non-thrust vectoring control variant. The Indian Air Force has a requirement of nearly 200 medium-weight fighter jets and 120 AMCA fighter jets, which will be supplementing the Su-30 fleet after 2040. The combined engine requirement for both AMCA and medium-weight fighter jet is around 1,300 engines for their full lifetime, as each aircraft goes through at least three engine changes during its lifetime. The Rafale outranks the present-day contemporary fighter jets in most parameters of operational capabilities, safety features, and ease of operation and maintenance. The Indian Air Force's Su-30 fighter jets could be termed as a fourth-generation aircraft, while the Rafale aircraft could be considered a fighter jet of 4.5 generation. The Rafale is much ahead of the Su-30 with much smaller radar and infrared signatures, which makes it harder to detect. The Rafale also offers a substantial increase in radius of action in air-to-air -air as well as air-to-ground rolls, greater load capacity, and more wing and fuselage stations. The Rafale has multi-sensor data fusion, which collects and processes information from multiple sensors, to give the pilot a consolidated air situation map. The Spectra EW suite provides a terrific enhancement to operate in highly dense environments, where there is a heavy presence of anti-aircraft radars and systems, and the Spectra also selects the most effective countermeasures against the system. The RBE-2 radar is capable of conducting engagement of beyond visual range targets at distances beyond 100 km and is also capable of real-time generation of 2D and 3D maps for ultra-low level flying. The long-range Meteor Systems gives air dominance to the Rafale aircraft, as its no-escape zone is thrice that of the current US-made AMRAM. Converting the initial deal for 36 Rafales to the original requirement for 126 aircraft is the need of the hour, to counter emerging Chinese capabilities in stealth technology, cruise systems, and airborne early warning systems. Bharat Electronics Limited is developing an infrared image search and track system for Su-30 aircraft of the Indian Air Force, to replace its current OLS-30 system, and will also find its way into India's medium-weight fighter jet. The medium-weight fighter will have an internally mounted infrared search and track system with a detection range up to 100 km, new heat seeker according to Indian conditions, and advanced software that can outperform the Russian system currently equipped on Su-30 fighter jets. The indigenously developed system will be superior to the Russian system in terms of range precision and reliability, and will be first installed on Su-30 fighter jets. The Indian Space Research Organization and the French Space Agency have signed an agreement to set up a network of satellites for maritime surveillance, and will help detect identify and track ships in the Indian Ocean. The agreement is significant as it has come at a time when Chinese ships and submarines are showing increased activities in the Indian Ocean. 
A former head of NASA has said, that NASA and Indian Space Research Organization can work together for India's first manned mission to space, by allowing US private companies to train and select the astronauts for the mission. Major General Charles Frank Bolden has said, that ISRO and NASA can work together to put Indian experiments on the International Space Station, or the Indian astronauts on International Space Station to actually do the experiments. Thank <laughs> you.